Man, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with our best friend, Lurch. Shout out to, I think it was Pretty Crazy, who said that. If if I'm getting that wrong, just shout yourself out in the comment who who made that comment because it is the 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 similarity is just you can't beat it. He is Lurch forever. You know what I mean? But anyways, we're continuing on. Um, he has another phone call now. This person just sounds like a close friend, almost maybe like a like a family friend or something like that because he's super. He you'll see in the call he's super supportive and like you could hear in his tone that this person actually wants to do something to help. Unlike his brother, Nolan. But that's because I feel like he doesn't know as much as his brother does at this point. But anyways, we're going to dive into this phone call. It's another interesting one. And um, yeah, you know, grab the shit y'all need. I got my little my little OJ and, and, and special sauce. Y'all get what you need. Let's do it. Hello? Hey, Paul, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing. From awesome. OJ, I thought it was glitching out. It does that sometimes. Oh, no, that was a long process trying to approve that call. Yeah, it should be easier now, though. Okay. I'll have to um, follow up on, uh, how to put it, on uh, leaving and making an account for this. I didn't want to do it right now while I was on the phone, but I can certainly set up an account. Yep, yep. See, now this person, see, this guy is trying to figure out how to make an account. He sounds happy to hear from Paul. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments if you know who this person is. But that's neither really here nor there. I just think he doesn't know the full gravity. He's just like, oh, poor stupid Paul. He's in jail. Let me try to call him and help him out. Is I'm sure it's his mom. See, when I first started this trial, I was like, Paul really doesn't have anything to do with this. It's his mom, whatever, you know, he'll get a few years. But no, he really did. He really did have a hand in this, like, big time, the more you look at it. So any news? Uh, nothing so far, no. All right. I got some news. I made contact with your attorney, finally. Oh? Mm-hmm. Um, I found an obscure email, a Gmail account, and I... Sent him a message, and he responded back today. Um, gotcha. He obviously doesn't know that I've been talking to you for a while, and he doesn't know that yeah. I've been with the prosecuting attorney or the judge. Yeah, yeah. Wait, he said he doesn't know that he's been with the prosecuting attorney or the judge. So this person obviously, actually, this person knows what happened. He's been with the prosecuting attorney already. We know what the charges are for. But I feel like also it's like, okay, child, whatever. But he's like, but Paul didn't really have any. Like when we find the evidence, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll see that Paul was just being forced to or something like that. Little does he know. But I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to say too much. I'm just not too encouraged by him, Paul. Um, he has me a little worried. <laughs> I, I hope he sincerely representing you in your best interest but i am uh i think i'm going to talk to nolan tomorrow yeah well excuse me i'm trying to eat here i have <laughs> you're good i'm <laughs> trying to cram in a bite before i have a meeting tonight so, you know what's also strange is paul usually is the one that's like trying to push the conversation forward but at this point, Paul isn't. He's just kind of like responding like one word answers. I don't know who these people are to each other, but obviously the other person's like pushing the conversation forward, which is kind of just I'm just pointing it out because it's kind of odd because usually every call that he's on, he's begging for someone's attention. You know, stepmom, Nolan, brother, mommy, like, you know, that's he's he's always begging for attention. This time it's like he doesn't he's kind of standoffish. Ah, gotcha. So you caught me right there, if, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> hey, Paul, can I ask you some more background information? Do you mind? Sure thing. Sure thing, go ahead. All right. So you 
when you lived in Oklahoma, you were living with your father and your stepmother? Yeah, that was after Shonda and Dad got divorced. Okay. And Dad remarried. And so that was for quite a long time, right? Since you were five years old till you were 18? Um, they got div- Shonda and Dad got divorced when I was... It makes me cringe every time he calls his mother, who he calls mother slash mommy. It, it cr- makes me cringe that he's calling her Shonda. Like, bro, come on now. Come on. Get real. That's not going to... Changing the name up is not going to distance you far far enough. Okay? You're, you're, you're in the shit right now. That's all I'm going to say. In foster care. And... Um... They got remarried, dad got remarried in 2011, so I was 10 or so, 9 or 10, I don't remember the exact age. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. I was Um, still in elementary school that much, I know. And you were in foster care. Uh, That's um, Department of Human Services had to get yeah. involved with between us and Shonda. I wouldn't say it was really any of dad's fault. Sure. He was trying um, to provide for the family. Sure. Oh, I, I, no judgment at all. Um, your father, I'm just, I'm trying to get some better understanding as I'm going to write the judge and just so I can make a stronger argument on your behalf. See, he's going to write the judge. It must be like, it's probably someone from school, like his old school. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Um, maybe like a counselor. When he said, let me ask you some more background information. I was like, what is this your lawyer? Or like, who is this man? Just the mysterious helper who just wants to see Paul win. Shit. The, the only person. No, no, there's a few people. The the woman who wants to marry him, which is just like, uh, ew. I heard she was, like, a lot older, too, so that's kind of interesting. Um, you got hit this guy, and I feel like his stepmom sort of kind of cares about him, but other than those people, nobody, shit, nobody cares about this guy. I mean, why would you? No one in the family should feel bad about him. But, um, yeah. Um, so as you were approaching 18 years old, you were told that you're going to have to move out and that's, do I understand that right? Um, it wasn't as I was approaching, it was more a little while after I was hoping to have at least waited until after my graduation, but due to COVID it was postponed till July of 2020. Okay. And my, my, uh, I guess timeout date that, um, not timeout. Uh, not limit. What's the word I'm looking for? Deadline to find a place of my own was the end of May. All right. Did your um? And you were given this deadline by your dad? Yeah. Okay. And so. You reached out to Shanda and asked if you could live with her. Is that right? Uh, I didn't ask if I could live with her, no. I ended up at one point ranting over text about how I was trying to find a place to stay because my father and stepmother were basically kicking me out. And she offered to let me come up here for sanctuary. Interesting. So Shonda recruited him. I didn't know this. This this gives us a deeper look. He was getting kicked out by his dad. Now, we could take this even further back and be like, why was he being kicked out by his father? Now, remember, there's another brother there. Why not let the older brother stay there and help out, maybe pay some bills? You know, use him. Have him as a worker. He was probably being evil to Timothy. And that was one. It's probably what it, it probably wasn't the only thing. But it was probably one of the factors that was like, hey, you, at 18, you're getting the fuck out of this house. Like, nah, tough, nah, you're getting the fuck out. You're figuring it out. You're going to get a job. You're getting out of here. Maybe, maybe I'll give you a few months, figure it out. 
get, get up out of here. You're being, and then Shonda recruits him. And then what happens? Get, um, sorry, Timothy ends up with her. Now they're back together. Now I think, I don't know. May I feel like Paul maybe influenced Shonda a little bit. Maybe not influenced her, but kind of fueled that energy that was deep down. You know, they worked really well together. They were a, they were a good tag team, which is actually crazy to say. Okay. No, to be honest, it's not like she did much better teaching me life skills. I don't even know how to drive. Well, hey. <laughs> well, you're never gonna learn, buddy. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, you're you're never gonna experience that, big dog. <laughs> Don't feel bad there. Isaac doesn't drive. <laughs> no, it, it's it, it's tough when you have to go ten miles on an e-bike just to get to work, though. Yeah, I hear you. Ike's job is just like a mile away, but we we're able to get them rides most of the time. Yeah, I'd say the only times that Shonda lets me get, lets me or either gives me a ride or lets me use Uber or something is during the winter months when it's a bit too cold to be e biking. So I remember one night I just about uh, got skewered by this deer. Oh no! I had to have Twenty or thirty points. I just about got skewered by this deer. You it, we. <laughs> You go to jail talking like that, they're going to either fuck you up or fuck you. One or the other. It's not going to be pretty. You know, I almost got skewered by this deer. It was so just, like, not good. It was unconventional. Like, bro, go up in there and talk like that, big bro. That shit is crazy the way he's just, that's just the way he is. And he wants to be Mr. Big Time. Like, it's fine to be a little, you know, feminine. That's what he is, feminine. But... Don't be don't be playing hard when you actually a marshmallow. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what he did, and now he's about to go into jail. And with that type of just his cadence alone, guys, it, it doesn't even matter what he's saying. I'm not even listening to what he's really saying. Obviously, he almost got skewered by this. Anyways, the cadence that shit. No, nah, you're gonna. It's not gonna go well, bro. Nope. A quick interjection, ladies and gentlemen. If you go down to the link below and you see my Patreon, that, that little shiny Patreon membership, I just dropped some exclusive content about the YouTube mom, Ruby Frankie. And it's um, YouTube would censor it right away. Um, it's a bunch of photos. It's nothing crazy. You know what I mean? It's, not, it's, it's just uncut footage of um, RF getting found and holy shit is crazy so go check out the patreon if you guys are interested let me know what y'all think and um yeah let's get back to the video <laughs> what terrifying. the world terrifying, yeah. terrifying. terrifying. middle of the night you can see the deer charging at you no thank you <laughs> well i had sean to drive me to work at, for a while after that because i was not risking the back roads again and this is even more like evidence that she has capability and the sound mind to oh it's too cold i'll drive you to work um oh you got attacked by a deer i'll drive you to work i'll i'll do this instead so you ca you can't tell me that you you weren't of sound mind to realize like oh timothy is getting skinny let me feed him some food like come on guys it, it, what <laughs> Just the defense that she puts for herself because they didn't really have one except for her blackouts. Like she just gets hit with waves of blackouts and she can't remember shit. That defense is so ass pathetic. Man, I wish Shonda could see these videos. You fucking suck, Shonda. <laughs> She's terrible. Terrible liar and an ugly ass evil person. Sure. You must have lived in the country then, huh? Uh, no, I just, I live, I, when I went to work, I took the back roads. There was some hillside area that was less populated. Mm-hmm. So. All right. So when you were, you're still in Oklahoma with your dad and your stepmom and you're 18 and they're telling you, you're going to have to get your own place. Did, was Timothy with you there too? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, see, me and him. There you go. 
Obviously, yeah. See, this is where, and, and, and then he goes to, to live with Shonda, and and Paul is like, "Yep, we meet again." I I swear it was one of those things. We meet again, you little shit. Now what? Now what? And my mom hates you. Gang, gang, gang. We're gonna gang up on your ass. That shit is crazy. And we shared the same room back in Oklahoma. Okay. So both of you are gonna have to leave the house. No, no. Just me. All right. Timothy wasn't even, uh, I think he was still 13 or 14, something like that. But how did he end up then at Shanda's? Um, one thing is, I don't really think that my dad knew how to take care of other men. He didn't know how to take care of no. males in general. He was better with my sister. And my oh, yeah. sister, but that's fucking weird. You can't take care of a, a boy. He said he couldn't take care of men. Shut. Oh my god, Paul is annoying. He's better. He's he's better to take care of your sister. That's weird. I don't know the way he thinks about things, the way he processes shit and rationalizes it. Rationalizes it. It's a little off. <clears throat> My stepmother basically gave him an ultimatum that because I had been doing better, I have been doing better up here before Timothy moved up. Um, she gave dad an ultimatum to either have Timothy come up and live with us or she would get DHS involved. Oh. Damn. Yeah. I guess it must have been pretty bad. I don't really have any details other than that on on it. So, so Shanda wanted Timothy to move in with her. Yeah, yeah. What? No. Something happened, guys. I don't know what it was, but she wanted that boy. He he said, yeah. She wanted her. To, she wanted Timothy to move in. It's not like it was an obligation for her. She wanted him. Now, if that's true, she had this really planned. Like, it was super premeditated. Anyways, let's continue. So, I guess at some point in her mind, she realized that in her twisted psychopathic mind, he was useless. Because I feel like that's one of the main reasons she had me come up here was because I was financial support. Oh, is it possible? So I think I've told you, um, in our family, we have, my nephew's fully autistic. He's nonverbal and, uh, he sounds like he was very similar to Timothy. They were similar in age. Was yeah. Timothy verbal? Could he speak? He could speak, but it was very garbled. <laughs> And yeah. he couldn't run. He couldn't run properly either. He's sure. speech and motor impaired. So I'm just guessing here. Just, I mean, but I'm pretty confident to guess that Shanda did not realize how much work Timothy was going to be. I don't think she did. No, I think so. This she is what my frustrator. He became 16. He became an opportunity to exploit money from that's about it but when she realized due to his disabilities well maybe not due to his disabilities but because of his yeah. problems as i guess she would call them he was not going to be of use to her and oh this is crazy this is like a bombshell like he's given us the entire reason now it makes sense she wanted timothy for the check why not you got Paul for financial stability, right? Help me pay the rent. Help me pay groceries. And then you got Timothy for the check. And Timothy will just be wherever the fuck Timothy is being autistic. Just, yeah, that's the plan. Just leave. Yeah. That's what. She, and then she gets him and it's like, oh, shit. And I bet you the check that she gets would go to like everything Timothy needs and then some more. So now it's like a burden to you. Again, if that's true. Now we get a motive for why she hated him. She just hated him because he didn't turn out to be the, the opportunity that she wanted. P 
possibly possibly this is crazy though for once paul is actually dropping some some dimes out here this shit is crazy he's, he's giving us the beans right now all on the all on the publicly monitored phone call it's lovely to be honest i think this whole thing was premeditated on her part because when my stepfather adam was in the house she had to, she basically had someone holding her leash for lack of better terms keeping her from going full psycho on my brother and adam he's the one that had a stroke yeah may he rest in peace oh he passed away i didn't know that he passed away back in uh, february of last year okay while i was in here yeah uh, so these calls only last about 15 minutes or so. I oh, just want to let you know, so we don't have too much time left. Um, okay. I know you put 25 in, and I figured Back I should... Back to the begging. Let's go. Can, can I get some change? Can I get some change, sir? Can I get some change? I don't like this jail food. Can I get some change? <laughs> Fucking desperate ass. Like, man, that's crazy. I mean, he dropped the, he he dropped some info on us right there. That was the whole idea. And he was down with the plan. He didn't have nowhere else to go. So she'll help him with rent, too. It's kind of like a, a, a co, like, you know, you're helping each other. Then get Timothy, a little extra couple thousand for the disability. Nope. <laughs> it's a lot more work than you thought, huh? You can't give him back now, huh? And for me, is that normally uh, Joanne can help as well. She puts in about 50 or so a week. But I'm not sure if she will be able to this week. I can still manage a 40 or $50 order, but I can't really manage what I normally get with 25 With my appetite, the food they give us here is insufficient completely and totally. All right. I got you a pillow, too. Did you get that? Uh, not yet. You, you, gave me, you got me a care package? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I'll probably get it uh, Friday, then. You got me a pillow. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Well, <laughs> man needs a pillow, Paul. <laughs> yeah, they freaking uh, they took my part of my uh, improv pillow because it was yeah. an extra sheet. I think I told you about that, but okay. Well, what's your balance right it, now in your commissary? Uh, twenty-five. Twenty-five. I can. Oh, like good. I said, I can suffice with forty to fifty. With that much, I can manage to get what I normally do. I get enough noodles to last me a week along with a midday snack and um, some chips to mix with the noodles to make it a bit more filling. Sure. But you, yeah, um, of course. Yeah, that, see, that's how that's that's how the prisoners, I was, look back at all my videos. We, we go through a new prisoner, a new case. There's always, like, the defendant right there. And I'm like, damn, he got fat in prison. Another one. Damn, he gained weight in prison. Another one. Damn. Everybody's gaining weight. Now I get it. Everybody is hogging up that commissary because guess what? The jail food is ass. And I never really thought about it like that. So you're just eating ramen all day with chips. Imagine that as a full course. Man, as a full course, three every day, man, your shits must be crazy. Your Your asshole must be like leaking i'm sorry that was a little descriptive <laughs> that was descriptive but literally like shit oh god you're only allowed 75 a week yeah 75 a week okay i just want to make sure they're not cheating you because i put in 125 last week so that would mean that you had 50 already still in the commissary Hmm, that's weird. And then if you had that 50 in there, the reason I put 25 more in, because I figured that would bring the balance up to 75 for the week. Yeah, yeah, I'm following you here. I didn't, that's, what in the world? Uh, I know it's not an error on your part. It's got to be something that this freaking jail did. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get the full amount. What do you guys think? You think he used it real quick and emptied that? He hurry emptied the account and was like, "Yeah, no, I only have like twenty five right now. So if I could get an extra, hmm, Brocom been a lie right there. What y'all think? Lurch is over here trying to be sneaky, sneaky. 
What on earth? What on earth? But I, I see, can... you see how it keeps harping on it? What on earth? Oh, I need to check on... Huh. Like, bro. Yeah. I don't know. You're sketchy, just like your fucking mom. If you're needing some more funds, I can help you with that. That's not a problem. It have to be in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just... I don't want to feel like I'm burdening you with having to worry about that. Yeah, no burden. Um, well, in case we get cut off, yeah, I'm going to hopefully talk again with your attorney and I don't know, just encourage him to, he seems resigned yeah. that you're going to, I don't know. I don't want to say too much. Then I'm going to talk to your brother. Left. Okay. Yeah. He seems resigned that you're just fucked, bro. So I don't know what to tell you. That's hilarious. I love how even his public defender is like, yeah, bro. I mean, I'm going to show up. You know, I'm I'm going to show up. But in terms of you surviving this, I, yeah, nah, I'm not really doing that extra shit. I'm going to see my wife and we're going to see a movie. The fuck? <laughs> yeah, nah. Yeah, nah, he's fucked. Even his defender is like, yeah, we're we're not we're not taking this serious. He's going to jail regardless. And then hopefully yeah, I, I'll, uh, I think I'll be talking to Joanna. Yeah, I'll um I'll talk to no I'll probably text Nolan today at least to let him uh, make sure that he knows that he'll be calling him or whatnot tomorrow. Okay, and then inquire about your commissary. You should have seventy five in there. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely will. Okay, I missed I missed a couple. I was missing a couple noodles with the last door order, and I sent in a grievance on that. So, but I'll definitely inquire about that. Okay, I got the receipts for everything. So, yep, yep. I got the receipts <laughs> for everything. <laughs> He's low key checking them. He's like, "Hey, don't play that. Don't play that shit with me. Come, come, come to me straight." Okay, man. Paul is a little weasel. What y'all think? I think he I think he lied about that shit. He probably spent it on some extra shit and said he only Come on, bro. Say you want more money. If you're begging, beg with your beg with your chest, you know? Like, "Hey, I'm down bad and I'm begging right now. I want another 50. Can you or can't you?" <laughs> like it's pathetic. It's quite pathetic. All right. Well, I'm glad you called me. We're going to have a video conference tomorrow, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, I had to schedule that for 2 o'clock, soon. though. That's fine. I'll talk to you soon, though, Randall. Talk to you tomorrow. All right. Thank All you. right. We'll talk to you later, that. Paul. Goodbye. So, you feel me? Um, yeah. Paul Paul ain't shit. And, man, did he drop the intent, bro. And you know Shonda be talking. She's the type of person... When she's mad, she's just going to get to talking shit to whoever's in the room. So, you know, you're just going to hear her problems. And Paul is probably sponge number one because she could get home and just talk about all the terrible shit that's just pissing her off to paul it doesn't even matter if he's there to to like say something back or to actually hear her she just wants to you know what i mean but um she wanted him for a check and it was a lot more work than she expected i feel like that might be the real reason behind her hatred but you guys let me know Anyways, people, I'm going to see you in the next one. I love you guys. Tune into the live tomorrow. We go live every week, Monday, Tuesday, 8 to 10 PST. I had to slow down and remember. 8 to 10 PST. Check out your time zone and, you know, just route that to PST. And I'll see y'all there. Love y'all. I'm out of here.